everyone, this is Mindy here for Lawn Fawn, and today I'm going to make a flippin' awesome terrific day birthday card. It has been a while since I made a flippin' awesome card, and I'll admit I made some mistakes along the way, but I am going to share them with you so that if you run into these problems, you know how to fix it. The two sets that I'm going to be using today is the terrific day and terrific day add-on. So what I did is I already die cut out some pieces from the flippin' awesome die set. And I laid out the scenes that I wanted to create. This is going to be a very simple scene building scene, meaning I'm not going to add much more than what's already there. Now, just so I don't forget, I'm bringing out my camera and I'm taking a picture so I don't forget what I have where. I am going to speed through the coloring quite a bit because there's a lot to get through in this video. But all of these images were stamped on 80 pound white cardstock using the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is Copic friendly because I'm using my Copic markers to color the images. Now, because I am speeding through this, I didn't have a chance to add the colors to the very top, but I will give you the combinations of some of the colors I'm using quite often throughout all of these images. So I mainly am sticking with a teal and a light pink kind of uh, color scheme for this. What you're going to see is R22 and R21 that I'm going to use a lot. And I'm also going to be using, uh, I believe it is a BG13 and BG11. And I'm also using BG32 and BG15. So those are some of my more um, frequent ones throughout all of the images that I'm coloring. The mushroom here, I believe, was the BG32 and BG15. And I will only add just like a light gray line to the side there. And I believe that was maybe W2, just enough to do a little bit of shadowing. And I'm going to leave the spots on the mushrooms white. A lot of times for smaller images like the hat on the squirrel and the flower, I'm not going to do any shading to. I'm just going to grab one of the colors I have sitting off on the side to fill those in. And I am going to alternate the colors as for the hats on the other critters. So this one's going to have that teal hat. And then the other critters will have either another teal or a pink hat. So for the squirrel, I am using E55, E53, and 51. And this is also another color combination I'm going to use on another critter. So I was trying to keep my Copic markers to a minimum. I'm using it on the bottom of that acorn kettle. And for the top of the acorn kettle, I have E44 and 43. I was really trying not to overcomplicate the whole process. I really wanted to keep everything fairly simple. And by having the terrific day and then the add on, I thought was a good way to really fill up the scene on my flippin' awesome card. So as I moved up to my other critter, I used that same E55, 53, and 51 color combination. And then for the back portion, I'm doing a little bit darker. I did the E44, 43, and 42. Now this one, uh, I did a teal hat that'll have a pink banner, but on my fox, that one I'm going to alternate and have wearing a pink hat because, well, why not? Now for my mouse, I decided to make the mouse a light gray using W4, W2, and W0 because the main reason I did a light gray mouse is because the squirrel is already brown. So I kind of wanted to mix up my colors just a little bit. Gave the mouse a teal bow tie, some pink ears, and a little pink cheek. I did a quick sweep with a BG11 for my stand there that I'm going to have my macaroons and also my cake. Here's where I'm coloring in the hat. And so like I said, I gave the fox a pink hat using R22 and 21 with a teal bow tie. And then to color in the fox, I normally go pretty dark, but I was trying to keep everything fairly light in the colors, almost kind of pastel. So for this, I'm using E15, E13, and E11. And then I'll just give a, a couple little kind of shaded areas to the belly and the face using W2. Then after I get the face and the tail and the belly colored in for the fox, which I think is just super cute, I'm going to move on to working on that tree stump, which is a larger area to color. So for this, I am going to go back to some of those colors I already have dug out. So for the bottom of the tree trunk, I'm using the E44, 43, and 42, kind of keeping the lightest area towards the top and towards the center. 
I'm really trying not to overthink this whole process and just enjoy the coloring. Now for the trunk though, I did have quite a bit of open space, which is why I chose a three color combination. Same thing for the top of the trunk. I did the E55, E53, and 51. Now for the banners, I'm going to alternate those colors. I'm not doing any shading for these, just adding those pinks and teals. Once everything is completely filled in, I'm going to line up the coordinating dies. Hold them in place with post-it tape and die cut these out and then set them off on the side to work on the rest of my card. This is the main piece for the flippin' awesome mechanism that I die cut out of 80 pound white card stuff. Now I had already folded everything over but I am going to show you on screen. These tabs on the end just fold over and I'm reinforcing everything with my bone folder. So for this one we're just going to fold all of those score lines over and then we're going to flip it and score them back the other way. This is going to make our flippin' awesome mechanism really fly through, make it nice and smooth. There is a small square die in the flippin' awesome die set, and that is what's going to be our main area or where our images are going to go. So I die cut out four pieces of 80 pound weight cardstock and four pieces of the green paper. I mainly just wanted that for grass at the bottom of my scene, so I took two of those squares. I'm lining up right next to each other. I took the grassy border and held that down with low tack tape so I could die cut those out and repeated that for the other two pieces as well. So now I'm going to have green grass at the bottom of my scene. I'm going to add clouds to those four white squares that I had die cut out and I'm going to use the cloudy stencil for this. So I just added a little bit of repositionable adhesive to the back of that so it's holding in place on my make art station. And then I'm bringing in the cloudy stencil and just quickly going over that with tumble glass distress oxide ink. I'm going to go through all four of these squares to add those clouds. And as far as that repositionable tape, it's just a really low tack tape that when you're done using it, you can just rub it off with your finger. There is some that gets stuck to my make art station, which I just rub away as well. So it comes off really easy, but it just just helps kind of hold things in place while I'm moving through these clouds really quickly. I'm going to bring my grass in and just kind of check where my cloud line is. And then from the bottom of that, I'm going to bring up that tumble glass just so it kind of looks like a complete scene. And I'm going to bring that up just right below the line of that last cloud stencil that I applied. So I'll go through and just repeat that on all four of the squares. You don't necessarily have to do this. I just really like to have kind of that complete scene in the background. So these panels now, for the most part, are done except for a little bit of stamping and adding of images. But just to make sure I don't lose my grass pieces, I'm going to just take my tape runner, add it to the back of the grass, and add that towards the bottom of my pieces that have the clouds on them. So these so far, I can just set off on the side to work on the rest of the card. Now, I was really frustrated. This is kind of where things went downhill for me, is I did not have any more of that green spiffy speckled paper. So I had to improvise. And to do that, I needed to try and recreate that spiffy speckle look. So this is the last piece. It's got the tab on it off of our flipping awesome mechanism. I'm taking the grassy stencil and I had kind of lined up my previous pieces to about where the grass would be. And then I'm ink blending on celery stick ink from Lawn Fawn. I need to recreate that speckled look. So I took some jalapeno ink, just a little bit darker than celery stick, kind of squished it down onto my work surface there, added a little bit of water, and then I'm going to flick this all over that area yet that I still have that stencil in place. So for having to improvise, I think this came out pretty close to the paper. Now I'm taking that stencil and I'm going to mask that grass off so I can add my clouds to the background. So holding all those down with the magnets from my make art station, bringing in the cloudy stencil again and adding a few clouds in the background. Now once I have the clouds on there to keep everything cohesive with my other pieces that I have, I'm going to bring those four squares back in and I'm going to add a little bit of the ink to the bottom of those just to kind of darken that up a little bit. I think this is the celery stick just a little bit there to match that piece that I just did. Now also off screen I did go ahead and die cut out of that spiffy speckle paper pack some of the teal speckled paper and I'm adding that to the back of those squares and the reason I'm doing that is in case I had any ink which some of them did actually have ink. I wasn't going to add this until I seen that there were some green smears on the back. So this is just going to give it a nice clean look. 
Now I have these all put together and I am going to do some stamping on the front. To do this, I'm just using an acrylic block. It was a lot easier than lining these up in a misty tool, but I only want part of this sentiment. So I am going to mask off the last half of this. This is off of the, I think it's the terrific day or the add-on that these sentiments are. And I'm going to mask that off with the post-it tape, ink that up with the black licorice ink, remove that post-it tape, and then I can stamp that down. So I cleaned off the stamp. I masked off the front portion of the sentiment, inked up that last half, and then stamping this down. So it's going to have kind of that wavy motion going across the scene, but I have four pieces. So I'm going to do this one more time. Doesn't matter which one I use. I just want to make sure I'm masking one of those off, remove that post of tape, ink it up, and then stamp it down. Now there's one more sentiment that goes with this. So I'm going to place that on my block. I don't need to do any masking and I'm going to stamp this on my last square. Now I can bring in my flippin' awesome mechanism. So we have our scene here that's face up. I'm going to fold the flap over and we're going to follow those score lines. So this first one, or actually this is the last square out of my whole thing that's going to be the scene. I'm going to add the tape runner to the back of that and attach that to that last square. This is a lot easier to see in person, but you're going to see those score lines. And I just line that up with the edge of the score line. Now for the rest of these, I'm going to add a tape runner just in between those score lines. So we're going to have three flaps to create our scene. So add that double sided tape. I'm sorry, the tape runner, or you could use double sided tape and then attach your square. So only one end of that square is really getting attached down. All right, so everything is coming together. Everything is looking really good. I'm happy with how this is turning out so far. Now it's time to kind of start making our scenes. So off on the side, I do have my phone and my uh, pictures open. Sorry about that. My pictures open so I can see the layout that I have wanted to create. So that first scene is going to have the little chick with a cake on top of that cake stand. And then the second one is going to have a mushroom and my little squirrel is going to be sitting on top of the mushroom. I had to kind of fiddle with it because I wanted that to be centered on there. And my squirrel is going to be holding the teacup. Now on this third scene, I have another cake stand that I'm putting that macaroon stand on. And my last scene has these two cute little critters. Then I can start building up this last scene where I had done the ink blending. So I'm going to have the fox and the mouse kind of sitting around their table created from a tree trunk filled with an acorn kettle and a piece of cake. I'm also going to quickly stamp out a sentiment on that last scene that I have there. So I'm going to just line it up on my mat, make sure it's straight, pick it up with the acrylic block, and I'm going to ink this up with the black licorice ink and then stamp this down kind of in the center of that scene. Now to build up my card, I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and trim it out with a stitched rectangle frame just so I know the size that I'm going to work with. So this is what's going to, or my flipping awesome mechanism is going to attach to it. I also have that stitched frame on there and I lined up about where I would have my mechanism go and then brought in the grass. So I'm going to try and make this a continuous scene, which is why I brought that in as kind of a placeholder. Now I'm ink blending on celery ink and I don't need to ink blend the entire thing. I mainly want to get the bottom and the edges. The rest of it's going to get color covered up with my flippin' awesome mechanism. Once again, I'm going to use that grassy stencil to mask off the grass and then bring in the cloudy stencil and add those clouds to the background just like I did on my mini scenes. Now to attach my flippin' awesome mechanism to my scene, I just folded those flaps over so they are behind that last scene and I am adding two small strips of double sided tape. This is the only part that's going to be attached to our card front for this mechanism. Then I can carefully remove the backing of that double sided tape and I am going to line this up on the front of my card trying to make sure that I have both of the grass lined up with each other so it looks cohesive throughout the background and then just push that down. Now we are going to be entering the problem solving portion of the video. I am after I attach that flip and awesome mechanism to the front, I'm going to give my tab a pull, which opened up great into this cute little scene. But when I pushed it back, that last flap wasn't moving. 
So I'm going to be coming back to fix that. For some reason, I went ahead and added foam squares behind my panel and I attach it to a piece of paper here that has those stripes on there. Now, this is going to look completely different than the picture. I did end up cutting this back out and adding it to a sunflower card base. Uh, I thought the yellow just stuck out a little bit more with the cloudy sky. Okay, so first, problem number one, my mouse was way too far over, he was hidden, so I took a palette knife and I just carefully pried him up. I used a tape runner so it was fairly easy to remove, but it did leave some sticky stuff kind of behind that flap. I'm going to rub away most of what I can, but there was still a little bit of sticky stuff on there. So I'm just going to go ahead, attach my mouse so now you can see him when you pull the tab out. And like I said, it's been a while since I had made one of these. So you may have caught some of these mistakes right off the bat. So to fix this problem with the sticky stuff underneath the flap, I took a piece of acetate and trimmed it to about the size that that last panel is. Then I'm adding tape runner to that very end. I'm going to tuck that under that flap and just let the rest of it kind of fall over. So I'm only attaching the acetate under that one part and you're not even going to be able to see it. So now in doing that, by adding that piece of acetate, I'm pretty sure I fixed my problem on why my flap, that front flap, wouldn't shut. So now when I give this a pull, everything is going to move smoothly. My mouse is in the scene now. Everything is working perfectly. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm die, die cutting out a decorative tab to add to the end there. And I just did that with some scrap of that green uh, spiffy speckle paper. And I'm just adding tape runner behind it and I'm gonna place that over my tab. So now when I give this a pull, everything is working smoothly. We can go through all of these cute little scenes wishing someone a happy birthday. And like I said, I did off screen just to trim out that stitched panel and attach it to a piece of sunflower cardstock. So I hope this has given you some inspiration as you see me work through my troubles in making it. I was way too invested to start over. So I'm Really happy this turned out and I was able to fix all my little whoopsies throughout the video. Thanks so much for joining me today. Have a great day. 